Hey Puppy Trades, I wanted to do a video analysis update on my favorite stocks for me personally to buy and hold shares of for April 2021 and beyond. Towards the end of this video, we'll look at a short term analysis of the NASDAQ 100, but for now, let's get right into uh, my favorite long term shareholdings for myself personally. We'll start with the value stocks. This is Nokia. We have a wave one. We have an ABC correction to put in a wave two low. Then we have another wave one and another wave two. So in LA wave three, you take the beginning of wave one, you connect it with the high of wave one and the low of wave two, and the median will give you that wave three target. So I believe right now, Nokia is breaking out of over 20 years of consolidation. It is entering wave three of wave three as evidenced by the fact it is broken above this wave one high. So Nokia is going to go to the lower bound of the pitchfork. It's going to go to the median of the pitchfork. I believe in the next four or five years, Nokia is going to be well on its way, um, nearer at $60. And that's going to be a, an incredible opportunity as a long-term shareholder for myself. Even just getting back to the lower bound of the pitchfork, you know, we'd be talking about a 500% return. I think another really interesting thing about Nokia, besides the fact it's going to go from 4 to 20 to 25, you know, all the way to 60 and then beyond 60, because once it breaks above this high, uh, that's going to confirm that this was all 20 years of consolidation. And I believe in the long term, 61 is going to end up being a conservative target. But besides that, uh, what's really interesting, I saw on Nokia's investor relations board that they're going to talk about a possible dividend um, at their annual general meeting on April 8th of 2021. So that's going to be really interesting. They're saying that we target recurring, stable, uh, overtime, growing ordinary dividend payments. So I think that would be a really incredible opportunity, even besides the fact that this is a, uh, an awesome chance for a return on investment going from 4 to 25 you know, all the way to 60 is the idea of getting paid dividends uh, along the way. So I think Nokia, uh, spectacular opportunity here. We want 2.34 to hold us to low to confirm that this is a completed wave one and a completed wave two. We're going to start wave three of wave three. We're going to go to the lower bound of the pitchfork. We're going to go to the median of the pitchfork. And I believe in the end, you know, when it's all said and done, 61 is going to end up being a conservative target. Speaking of dividends, this is Pfizer. This is a stock that already has 30 years of dividends, um, 30 years of dividend history, making it a member of the dividend aristocrats. This is a wave one. We have an ABC correction to put in a wave too low. Then we have another wave one and another ABC correction to put in another wave too low. So the invalidation for this is 27.88. If that level holds, Pfizer, at the very minimum, is going to go the length of wave one, place it the wave too low. That's going to take it all the way to 62. 62, of course, is going to be a very conservative target because that's only uh, the target for wave three of wave three. We'd still be looking for wave five higher. So if you know Pfizer took another wave five higher after a wave four correction, we can see Pfizer in the 80s. We can see Pfizer in the 90s. So I think Pfizer is a really good uh, long-term opportunity here for myself personally, so long as 27 holds as the low, uh, especially when you take into account that it has uh, earned um, a spot on the dividend aristocrats because it has paid uh, 30 years of dividends. So this is a wave one. An ABC correction puts in a wave too low. We take the beginning of wave one. We connect it with the high of wave one and the low of wave two. Be beautiful reactions on the median of the pitchfork. Now we're having all these reactions on the lower bound, offering the buying opportunity. You know, I love buying and holding shares of Pfizer for myself to not only write it to 60, not only write it to 90, but collect dividends along the way. Speaking of Pfizer, this is another pharmaceutical name. So uh, you guys might not be familiar with this. Robin Hooders, I checked. Uh, unfortunately, this stock is not offered on Robinhood. This is a uh, this is Sanofi and uh, Sanofi Aventis S N Y. This is a French pharmaceutical company. It doesn't really pay that great of a dividend. I think you get a dividend payout like once a year. But this is the wave one. An A B C correction puts in a wave too low. We have another wave one. Another A B C correction putting in another wave too low. This is another stock like Pfizer, like Nokia, breaking out of twenty years of consolidation. So this is Sanofi Aventis, SNY. If you take the length of wave one, you place it at the wave too low, that's going to take SNY all the way to 70. Now, assuming that 70 was the top for wave three, we would have a wave four correction that would go back down to 57. That's assuming 70 was the top. 
70 would be the minimum target for wave three because wave three is actually normally longer than the length of wave one. But assuming that 70 was the, the top for wave three, the wave four correction would take S and Y back down to 57. Then you would take the length of wave one, place it at the wave four low, and that would take S and Y all the way to 90. So if you're not interested in S and Y, Santa Fe Aventus, you know, I do think it's a nice, um, you know, shareholding opportunity. But I think it's another uh, just great gauge to show that this whole pharmaceutical sector, you know, this big pharma sector, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, fundamentally, you know, the big pharma sector has had its pop. You know, the, the charts say otherwise. The charts say the big pharma is just getting started. You know, so if you're not interested in Santa Fe Aventus, this just could be, you know, more confirmation, you know, that Pfizer and Merck, you know, also I saw in these uh, low implied volatility screeners that Glasgow Smith Klein is another one, but these big pharma names are getting ready for a huge breakout in the longer term cycles. Pfizer is my favorite one. I like SNY, Santa Fe Aventus as the French pharmaceutical version of this as well. If AstraZeneca fell below 43, um, that would be an incredible opportunity. So we could talk about that when we get there. But for now, this is SNY, uh, Santa Fe Aventus, wave one. ABC correction wave two. This is a wave three of three, you know, a large degree nest that Santa Fe Aventus is breaking out of. 70 is the next target. From there, uh, we would have a wave four correction. <coughs> and then we would take another wave five higher, which would be at least the length of wave one, taking S and Y all the way to 90. All right, last uh, value stock on this list. This is a credit squeeze. So I actually have it documented way from February, um, way before all of the you know, scandalous articles came out about hedge funds or whatever that I really wanted to get into, S and, uh, into Credit Suisse uh, below 11. And I can tell you why from a Wave 3 perspective, but first let's talk about, you know, something we know about how these institutions operate. They want, um, they want to get our shares from us uh, for these, you know, big long-term monsters. One thing I would ask about you before I explain this Wave count, you know, do you think some guy on the internet named Puppy Trades is the only one who knows that this is the generational wave too low for credit squeeze. So this CS credit squeeze, we have a wave one, and then this is actually an A, B, C expanded flat. An expanded flat is when wave B uh, goes slightly above the wave one high, and then we have another wave C that goes lower than wave A to put in the wave two correction. So the idea here is that credit squeeze has actually been founded uh, in the 1800s, so this is, um, you know, th th this isn't part of the chart, but this is our wave one and A, B, C correction puts in a wave two with this expanded flat low. So right now, 6.47 is the long-term invalidation. If credit squeeze is above 6.47, the idea is that this is a generational wave two low for one of the largest banks in the world. We talk about, you know, th this price target right now, you know, I think conservatively, we're going to have this high of wave B broken for the wave three target. That's 79. So just the idea that, you know, Credit Suisse, one of the largest banks in the world, you know, going from 10 to 79, you know, we're talking about a 700, 800% return on shares, one of the largest banks on earth. And if we think that's going to happen, you know, then it's no wonder, it's actually an expectation that we're going to get these scandalous news articles about hedge funds and, you know, liquidity right, to, to scare all these retail traders out of their shares. We see this big red volume bar, and it looks like it was immediately scooped up. But let's just get, you know, back to the wave count. This is a wave one, and A, B, C correction puts in a wave too low. On the larger degree cycles, you know, we're taking the length of wave B, placing it at the wave too low, and that's going to give us a conservative target that lines up perfectly with this high of 79 being broken. You know, obviously, an LA wave three, a wave three is going to go above the high of wave one, and any corrections that took place in between. So I believe seventy nine right here is a conservative target for Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse is going to go uh, the length of wave B in this instance, place at the wave too low. That's going to take Credit Suisse all the way to the seventies. You know, in the longer term cycles. I have right here in the shorter term, kind of what a, a shorter term outlook would look like, where this is the wave one, this is the wave two, this is the wave three up here at 20.19, uh, and then we would have a, a wave five higher, you know, so I think in the shorter term cycles, possibly by the end of the year, we're going to see credit squeeze 
uh, get back above 20. I think that would surprise a lot of people. Um, but, you know, I had this documented for a while that I wanted Credit Suisse uh, below 11. And then sure enough, when it came below 11, you know, there's all these scandalous news headlines. So I've gotten into Credit Suisse at 11. I'm still accumulating shares of Credit Suisse. Uh, I'm going to definitely buy more Monday morning. I love 10.70. Um, you know, as a price right now, I think if I could get a, a nice bulk position of Credit Suisse with an average price below 11, I'd be very happy for that. So the CS ticker Credit Suisse, wave one, ABC correction, puts in a wave too low. Then from here, it looks like we're having a wave one, two, you know, I think, you know, I really do think we could see Credit Suisse uh, back above 20 by the end of the year for this wave three higher. The wave four correction would go back to 14.95. And then at minimum, wave five would be the length of wave one, place of the wave four low. You know, we could see Credit Suisse at 23 by the end of the year. But I'm not interested in Credit Suisse um, for, well, I actually do think a leak call position could be very profitable in Credit Suisse. But I'm interested in Credit Suisse as a shareholder. You know, I, I want it to be in Credit Suisse for the long haul. Wave one, A, B, C, expanded flat, puts in a wave two correction at minimum. The wave three target is going to take Credit Suisse to a new all-time high. So I believe 79 is going to end up being a conservative target. We're talking about a 700, 800% return on one of the largest banks in the world. So we shouldn't be surprised. We should actually be expecting uh, that when we get this dramatic, um, you know, this dramatic sell-off, this you know, big shakeout that is accompanied by all these news articles to scare out retail. You know, but I'm not getting scared out. I am entering right now. And I'm happily entering Credit Suisse. Let's talk about another one uh, that a lot of traders are getting scared out about. You know, this one hasn't gone exactly the way I thought it would. This is Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors, R-I-D-E. So, you know, I had coming into the year, I wanted to get in Lordstown Motors below 20. You know, I thought I was getting a big steal here. So I definitely think I'm getting a big steal here. Let's just look at the wave count real quick. This is wave one. We have an A, B, C correction to put in a wave too low. And Lordstown Motors uh, appears to be um, completing an A, B, C correction from this wave one high. If we take the length of wave one, we place it at the wave too low. Lordstown Motors could be going on a run to 32, you know, potentially by the end of the year. I'm interested in Lordstown Motors as a long-term investment for myself personally. We can talk about the electric vehicles you know, and kind of some of the uh, implied volatility things that I've been seeing in the electric vehicles. But for now, let's just look at this Lordstown Motors wave count. Originally, um, you know, one big one big thing that, you know, LA wave theorists always get is, that, oh, they just, if they're wrong, they just recount. Okay. I really don't recount that much. I really don't recount that much. But this is a recount. This is, you know, I had this as a wave too low. You know, it turns out I'm going to, you know, pull the recount card. This was a wave A, wave B, wave C. Now we're putting in the wave too low. The invalidation is going to be down here at 10. So if Lordstown Motors is above 10, um, I believe that it will go the length of wave one, place of the A, B, C correction, wave too low. Lordstown Motors is going to 32 minimum, and that's extremely minimum because once we break above this, you know, wave one high, it's going to confirm that this was all, you know, consolidation. And as we know in Elliott Wave Theory, the deeper the correction, you know, the bigger the explosion, higher. Let's talk about Acromoto real quick. This is another, uh, you know, this is another, another electric vehicle stock that I really like. Before we get into, um, before we get into the chart, I want to show you guys something really interesting about these electric vehicles. So, uh, I've been working really hard night and day on an implied volatility uh, trading strategy that I could show you guys. I kind of realized that. You know, swing trading, you know, with the best Elliott Wave Theory can get you about a 60-70% hit rate. You know, implied volatility can get you about a 80-90% to 90 hit rate. Obviously, I don't sell options. But anyway, I've been working on a, you know, implied volatility uh, strategy for a while. And while I was collecting all this data, I saw that Acromoto, uh, the one-year implied volatility low for Acromoto was uh, on April 1st. So just recently, FUV Acromoto had the lowest of its implied volatility uh, one-year range in the past year. So that means that this is the cheapest options have been on Acromoto uh, in the past 52 weeks. What's that mean? That means that retail has fallen asleep on electric vehicles and that a huge move is coming. Okay, when we look at the Acromoto chart, we'll talk about which direction that huge move is coming. But it's not just Acromoto. Okay, NEO. 
also is looking like um, you know the same thing. If we look at Neo, the one year implied volatility low for Neo was you know a week or two ago. The last week of March, Neo was at the very bottom of its one year implied volatility range. So what's that mean? Retail's falling asleep on Neo. A huge move is coming for Neo. It's not just Neo. Nikola, I know I get you know clowned a lot for Nikola. Nikola's implied volatility range was at the very bottom of its one year implied volatility range. So options on Nikola have never been cheaper. Nikola is ready for a massive move. It's not just Nikola. Workhorse. Workhorse is at the bottom of its one year implied volatility range. So is there a theme here? You know, what's going on? Well, retail, the options market is very aware that retail has fallen asleep on these electric vehicles. Uh, you know, options on the electric vehicles have never been cheaper. You know, at the same time, retail sentiment on electric vehicles has never been lower. So the electric vehicles are ready for a huge move. We'll talk about FSLR uh, at the very end of this video. Talk about how some of these clean energy stocks look like they're going to be the ones you want to hold for this summer as swing trade opportunities. I like the electric vehicles as long-term opportunities. I'm an FSLR leap call, so I will be, you know, cashing out on the you know, the clean energy boom that I'm expecting this summer. All that goes to say is that Neo, Workhorse, you know, Nikola, and Akimoto, they're all at the very bottom of their one-year implied volatility range. So they're ready for huge moves. If we look at this Akimoto chart, in my opinion, it's very clear that move is going to be to the upside. So Akimoto, wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, puts in a large degree wave one. We have an A, B, C correction to put in a large degree wave two. Akimoto uh, forms a really nice pitchfork if you connect this high with this low, where we've seen the lower bound act as a magnet. We've seen the median act as a magnet. And now I believe the median will act as a magnet again. And that alone, without any wave theory, is letting me know that you know Akimoto is about to fly. But if we look at uh, the wave count, you know this is very clean right here. Wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, large degree wave one. A, B, C correction, large degree wave two with Akimoto's implied volatility at the very bottom of its one year reign. So options on Akimoto have never been cheaper. And at the same time, retail couldn't, you know, wouldn't touch electric vehicles with a 10 foot pole. You know, that's just how it works. So wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, large degree wave one. A, B, C correction, large degree wave two. These electric vehicles, the options market is already telling us they're ready for a huge move. The wave theory is helping us confirm that move is going to be to the upside. If we take the length of wave one and time and price, we place it at the wave too low in the next seven months. I believe we're going to see Akimoto in the 40s. I believe we're going to see Akimoto in the 40s. The next wave three target, this is actually the conservative wave three target, is 46. I like Akimoto as a long-term hold. I think that uh, it's also a possible swing here as well. So wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five, large degree wave one. A, B, C correction, large degree wave two. Akimoto has a beautiful pitchfork, lower bound axis of the magnet, median axis of the magnet and resistance. A, B, C correction puts in a wave too low. We want to see this wave one high of 8.89. Hold us the low. Akimoto will be going to 46 in the next seven months, implied volatility at its very lowest. You know, this could be a not only a good long-term hold, this could be a swing trade in my unprofessional, unlicensed opinion. So we're talking about, you know, growth stocks right now. We're talking about stocks with, you know, high beta, high, you know, th these things move, right? You know, Nokia and Pfizer and Sanofi and Credit Suisse, you know, these are more value stocks, right? Like the airlines and the silver miners, you know, you know you're not going to have a, your, your stomach lurch you know, in the, the first 30 minutes of trading on these stocks. But these growth stocks, you know, know what you're getting into. Uh, know, know what you can and can't handle. Akimoto, I think it's going to be worth it. We want to see um, 8.89 hold us the low. Akimoto will be going the length of wave one, placing the wave too low. Akimoto is going to 46. Let's look at another one. You know, I would say this one hasn't gone exactly as I thought it would, but this is Huya. Huya, a Chinese internet company. So this is Huya. The wave count for Huya is that the IPO uh, wave one high puts in a large degree wave one. Then we have an A, B, C correction to put in a wave two low. 
from that wave two low, we have another wave one and another wave two. And then Huya is actually getting a little close to invalidating this count um, for the, the first degree of this wave two low. What, I'm, what I mean by that is if Huya breaks below 18.14, then that means that this wasn't the wave too low. So we want to see Huya hold above 18.14. It's flirting with that net right now. You know, that kind of makes sense. We, we think Huya is going to be a monster. You know, we don't think they're going to make it easy. I think the big institutions know, you know, everyone and their mother has their stop below 18.14. But right now, if 18.14 holds us the low, Huya's got a, you know, a really nice risk reward ratio you know, is a long-term hold. So the, the wave count right now is that this is the wave one. We have our A, B, C correction to put in the wave too low. You know, and the Huya is going to be one of those uh, IPO, you know, growth names that I think could be a big opportunity um, as a long-term hold, you know, in, in my unprofessional and unlicensed opinion. But this is the growth stock. This is another one where, you know, you have to know what you're getting into. This isn't Pfizer. This isn't, you know, a silver miner. This isn't, you know, Credit Suisse where you're buying a value stock. This is a growth stock, um, you know, higher risk, higher reward, you know, a lot more movement on these, I should say. Wave one, A, B, C correction, wave two, wave one, wave two. So right now, the first invalidation will be if 18.14 is broken, then this can't be the wave too low. The more important invalidation is all the way down here at 11.79. If 11.79 is broken, then that means this wasn't the wave too low on the larger degree from this IPO sell-off. But if 18.14 holds at the low, then Huya will go wave one, wave two, wave three will take it to the 161.8% extension of wave one. That takes Huya all the way to 42. Then we have the 38.2% retracement for wave four, which would take Huya back down to 33. And then uh, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low would take Huya all the way to 51. Once Huya breaks above 51, that's going to confirm that all of this was consolidation. It's going to confirm that Huya is breaking out of a massive base here once it breaks above this wave one high. And then we're talking about, you know, targets in the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s uh, for Huya as a long-term shareholding. Right now, you know, I want to see 18.14 holds the low as the first invalidation because if 18.14 is broken, then this isn't a wave two complete. You know, what we would then do is say, well, will this wave two low be broken of 11.78? But right now, wave one, wave two, if this low holds, wave three takes Huya all the way to 42. You know, I think 42 is a target that we could see Huya at potentially by the end of the year. And then we would have a wave four correction to the 38.2% retracement, which would take Huya back down to 33. We go the length of wave one, places the wave four low. That takes Huya all the way to 51. And then we're really talking about a, a bullish scenario there because that would be breaking above this IPO high. And then Huya would be on its way to the 70s to the 80s, you know, all the way to the median of this pitchfork. Let's talk about, you know, the last two growth names. Then we'll get into the short-term analysis of the NASDAQ. This is the NXTD. You know, so when I talk about, you know, knowing what you're in, right, this is NXTD. This is a, a stock that's a dollar and 38 cents, right? So if you're, you know, you can't handle price fluctuations, you know, maybe, maybe six of the value stocks is what I would say. This is a Bitcoin miner. You know, this is a, you know, one of the last great ways are these um, crypto miners to get exposure to Bitcoin. I get a lot of questions, you know, when should I buy Bitcoin? You know, you should have bought Bitcoin below 10K. When I was talking about it, you should have bought Bitcoin below 12K. You know, buying Bitcoin at 60K, you know, that might not be worth the risk. I think NXTD and Ebon, you know, some of these Bitcoin mining stocks might be, you know, the last great way to get exposure to the crypto sector. But anyway, this is wave one. This is wave two. This is wave three. We have an ABC correction putting in a wave four low. Then we go in a wave five higher to put in a larger degree wave one. From that large degree wave one, we have an A, B, C correction to put in a large degree wave two. So right now the invalidation level will be if 1.05 is broken, then that means that this can't be the wave too low. So 1.05 is the invalidation level. If that holds, NXCD is gonna go the length of wave one, place the wave too low. That's gonna take it, I, I stress this word at minimum, that's gonna take NXCD at minimum to 4.18. That's just the wave three target, and that's the conservative wave three target. 
I think that, you know, longer term, yeah, NXTD could be, you know, above 10. I really don't think that's outlandish at all. We have wave one, wave two, wave three, A, B, C, correction, wave four, wave five puts in a large degree wave one high. Then we have an A, B, C correction putting in a large degree wave two low. Now we're entering wave one, wave two, wave three of wave three. So NXTD, if it's above 1.05, you know, this is a high beta stock. You know, if you, you can't stomach price swings, stick to the value stocks. But this is a growth stock. Wave one, wave two, wave three, ABC correction, wave four, wave five puts in a large degree wave one, ABC correction puts in a wave two low. Then we're in wave one, wave two, wave three of wave three. I think NXTD is getting ready to explode. It's going to 4.18 so long as 1.05 holds as a low. And I can't stress this enough. That's a minimum target. NXTD, you know, this, this thing could blow up to 10. You know, we've seen what these crypto stocks could do. I could definitely see NXTD in the double digits. And as crazy as it sounds, I can see NXTD in the double digits by the end of the year, okay? But as a shareholder, as a shareholding, you know, 1.05 holds us the low. You know, this could be one of the last great ways to get exposure to the crypto sector. One thing we talked about in the last video, if we go to the price overview, this is just a really great tool. Go to the price overview on bar chart. Makes it very simple. Just scroll down to the options overview. Look at the implied volatility, uh, the historical you know, you don't really have to focus on the historical volatility, but the implied volatility percentile, this will show you how low uh, NXTD or any stock's implied volatility is in the past one year. So the lower the IV percentile is and the lower the IV uh, rank is, IV rank is, you know, taken how many days of the year has implied volatility been lower than it currently is. The lower that these two numbers are, the cheaper the options uh, option premiums are on this stock that's also you know this is also a measure of how much juice you know these stocks have to have these big movements so um you know a lot of times stocks in the same sectors will have low implied volatility at the exact same time like we talked about with the electric vehicles nxcd you know two percent iv percentile seven percent ip iv rank you know this stock has some juice in it i believe this entire crypto mining sector is ready for you know a large leg higher you know, this is a huge bottoming play, in my opinion. And we could definitely see uh, this high uh, all the way up here be broken. You know, th this could be in the, the, the double digits quicker than a lot of people think. Let's go on another crypto mining stock. This is Ebon. So Ebon, a very clean wave count right here. Wave 1, ABC correction puts in a wave 2 low. We have a wave 1 and a wave 2, a wave 1 and a wave 2. Now we're within wave 3 of wave 3 of wave 3 of wave 3 right? A, a, a super nest, I would say. The invalidation is all the way down here at 4.83. This is another one. You know, know what you own. This is a high beta growth stock, higher risk, higher reward. I do think that Ebon is a very explosive one here. I love this as a, a way to get long-term exposure to the crypto sector, right? You know, I, I think that instead of buying Ethereum at 2000 and Bitcoin at 60K, you know, I would really be more interested in some of these crypto mining stocks like NXCD and Ebon uh, below 10. But this is wave one. This is an ABC correction to put in a wave two low. We have a wave one and a wave two, a wave one and a wave two. Now I believe we're within wave three of wave three of wave three. This is wave one. This is wave two. If 4.83 holds as the low, the minimum expectation is that this high of 13.70 will be broken. You know, that's we're already talking about basically 100% return just right there. But I believe Ebon is going to explode. Um, out of here and we're not going to be talking about 13 you know we're going to talk about be talking about ebon well into the 20s but ebon is going to the median of this andrews pitchfork if we take the beginning of wave one connected with the high of wave one and the low of wave two we have a gorgeous andrews pitchfork ebon is going to go from the lower bound of the pitchfork to the median of the pitchfork um, there's a few ways to count this so we'll get into you know an alternate wave count right here let's say you know oh puppy trades he's just counting everything as a one two well you could say that this is a leading diagonal or this is a three. And then in a, in a leading diagonal, in any diagonal, you can see uh, this wave four overlap the wave one high. And I got a question about that on XLY. You know, why is wave four overlapping the high of wave one? If it's a leading diagonal in Elliott wave theory, uh, the expectation is that wave four will overlap uh, wave one. We can talk about leading diagonals in other videos. But let's just say... You know, you thought I was just saying, oh, everything's a one and a two. 
well, you could say this is a wave one, this is a wave two, this is a wave three, this is a wave four, now we're in wave five, this is wave one of wave five, wave two of wave five. The minimum expectation would be that wave five has to go above the high of wave three, right? The whole point is that there's not really any scenario where you can count this where EBON doesn't go above 13.70, so long as this low of you know 4.83 holds is the low, we're talking about doubling uh, uh, return on investment just by getting above this wave three high. And the wave theory is highly stating that there's a good chance we're going to be above this wave three high, no matter how you count this. Uh, and then once we break above this wave three high, you know it's kind of off to the races. You know the next targets for Ebon are all the way in the 20s. So Ebon wave one, ABC correction wave two. Ebon breaking out of a massive nest right here. It's going to go to the lower bound of the pitchfork. It's going to go to the median of the pitchfork. I love NXCD. I love Ebon. I love these crypto mining names. Okay, speaking of crypto, let's look at Bitcoin right here real quick. So Ethereum, Ethereum has already broken above uh, this wave one high. Uh, we have a, a really nice pitchfork right now on Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum is broken above this wave one high. It, it made basically the exact same you know, highs and lows on the same dates. But Ethereum is incomplete to the upside. It doesn't really make any sense to say, yeah, well, Ethereum is incomplete to the upside. It's got you know, wave you know, three and wave five higher, but Bitcoin's going to be crashing while that happens. You know, that doesn't really make sense. This is wave one. This is an ABC correction way too low. Uh, Bitcoin is going to go off the lower bound of the pitchfork to the median of this pitchfork right here. And uh, I believe Bitcoin... Uh, is incomplete to the upside. Well, it's not technically incomplete because it hasn't broken above this wave one high yet, but Ethereum is broken above that wave one high. Bitcoin is going to go the length of wave one, place of the ABC correction, wave two low. Bitcoin is going to go to 69,000, you know, in the next one or two weeks. So I'm, you know, really excited to see how Bitcoin plays out. I love seeing that Ethereum uh, broke above this wave one high this weekend. But the bottom line, this is wave one. We have our ABC correction to put in a wave too low for Bitcoin. In, in the short term, in the next two or three weeks, I believe that Bitcoin is going to go uh, to the to the median of this pitchfork. Now, I just talked about Ebon. I talked about NXTD is like you know kind of you know more long term holds. So let's talk about the longer term picture of Bitcoin. You know, besides this wave one ABC correction wave two, where the minimum target is that sixty nine thousand is going to be reached very soon. Uh, let's talk about a longer term uh, view of Bitcoin right here. This is Grayscale Bitcoin, GBTC. Uh, the count on this is, is very clean. Uh, more importantly, we have a very clean uh, Andrews Pitchfork on this setup right here. So this is GBTC, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. We take the wave one low, connect it with the high of wave one and the low of wave two. We have a really nice pitchfork. So we see uh, this wick is attaching to the median of this pitchfork, then we have, you know, this is what's really beautiful. We have this ABC correction, and then the lower bound, you know, acts as a magnet. So right when people are saying, oh, you know, pitchforks don't work, yes, they do. Okay, we go to the median, we go to the lower bound of the pitchfork, and once you go to the lower bound of the pitchfork, once you have the reactions on the median, I mean, you're, you're at 80, 90% statistics without any wave theory that you're going to go to the median of this pitchfork. So, if wave one is just the, you know, let's talk about the wave count. This is wave one. This is an ABC correction wave two, right? These, this is the large degree picture of Bitcoin, right? This 2017 wave one, right? Everyone and their mothers just hearing about Bitcoin. You know, they're buying right here and then psh, everyone gets kicked out during this ABC correction. Then we have another wave one, another ABC correction, wave two low. Then we break out into the wave three of wave three next, okay? So that takes Bitcoin to the median to the lower bound of this pitchfork, and now you know we are resting on the lower bound of the pitchfork right now. So we go one, two, three, four, five. Grayscale Bitcoin is within um, a wave three right now. So it's starting wave five of wave three, in my opinion. In Elliott wave three, if you take the beginning of wave one, connect it with the high of wave one and the low of wave two, that gives you your large degree uh, wave three target. We take the length of you know wave three, place that this wave four low in the smaller degree time frames, the next target for Bitcoin, or grayscale Bitcoin, is going to take it to 72K. I believe more important than 72K, grayscale Bitcoin is going to go to the median of this pitchfork. The grayscale Bitcoin is going to go from 50 to 
you know, about 72. So I do believe there's a lot more upside uh, in Bitcoin. And that's just going to be the wave three high. We'd have wave four consolidation. and We have another wave five higher. This is grayscale Bitcoin GBTC wave one, ABC correction wave two low, wave one, ABC wave two, wave three, wave four. We take the length of wave three, place it at the wave four low. The wave five target is 72. Okay, let's talk about a short term uh, analysis of the NASDAQ real quick. So this is NASDAQ in the short term. You know, I think we, we did get a very interesting development uh, recently. So the NASDAQ, if you recall, it broke. It broke above this wave one slash wave a high. So right now, the NASDAQ is looking very clearly like this was a wave one impulse. And then we had an ABC correction to put in a wave two low. What happened recently, we broke above this wave one high that was put in on March 16th. So what's that mean? That means that even from uh, a, a bearish, even from the bearish scenario of the NASDAQ, what you're going to do, what the bears are going to do, they're going to take the length of what they're going to call wave A, place it at the wave B low, and the NASDAQ wave C minimum target is 13,700, right? So we're talking about, uh, you know, the NASDAQ getting very close to this all-time high in a more bearish scenario. So if you're a pessimist on the market, you're going to say this is the wave A, this is the wave B, you know, and then you take the length of wave A, place it at the wave B low, the wave C target is 13,700 for the NASDAQ. Well, you know, that, that's the more pessimistic route. What I think is more likely is that this is a wave one. This is an ABC correction to put in a wave two low. And then the wave three target will take the NASDAQ all the way to an all-time high of 13,970. The whole point is that an all-time high for the NASDAQ is within striking distance. If we see that this is from 3.5 to 3.16, in the next two weeks, we could see the NASDAQ at an all-time high. Even in a bearish scenario, the NASDAQ would be testing an all-time high right here. But let's say that the more aggressive scenario happens. If 13,970 is reached, there's a very high likelihood that this is a wave three. What you then do is you take the 38.2% retracement of wave three for your wave four uh, correction target. And then you take the length of wave one and you place it at the you place it at the wave four low. That would take the Nasdaq all the way to 14,540. Right. So we're talking about way above an all time high for the Nasdaq for this for this impulse. Let, let's get this countdown. If this is the more aggressive bullish count, this is a wave one. This is an ABC correction to put in a wave too low. Wave three would take the NASDAQ not just to the equal X target, but to the 161.8% extension of wave one. That would take the NASDAQ to 13,970. The wave four uh, correction would take the NASDAQ to 38, the 38.2% retracement. And then from wave four, you take the length of wave one, place it the wave four low. That takes the NASDAQ to 14,540. And that's the more aggressive bullish scenario. The more bearish scenario is that this would be a wave A, this would be a wave B, and then a wave C would be the length of wave A at minimum. That would take the NASDAQ to 13,715. The bottom line, the moral of the story, is that the NASDAQ has a lot more upside even if you know, you're a bear, right? If, if you're a bearish, the NASDAQ, you're going to be looking to short you know, at this 13,000 you know, 715 range. But if you're an Elliott Wave bear, you have to acknowledge that this, even if this is a wave A, and this is wave B, we've broken above this wave A high. The NASDAQ is incomplete to the upside until 13,700. If it goes to 13,970, that is extremely high odds that this is not a wave A or a wave B. This is wave one, this is wave two, this is wave three. We're going to know when the NASDAQ breaks to an all-time high, if we have a wave four correction to uh, 13,457, then the NASDAQ will take another wave five higher to 14,540. So that could be, uh, you know, a very bullish thing for the Nasdaq if we broke to a new all-time high, and then once we got all the way to, um, you know, fourteen thousand five hundred and forty, then we'd be looking for this correction uh, in the market that we're talking about. But remember, the emerging markets, EEM to sixty. This is my primary gauge right now for uh, a sell-off in the stock market. EEM to sixty. 
is my primary gauge once it reaches this equal X target or these two equal X targets. EEM has a really nice box for the emerging markets. I think the bulls are you know, riding clear until EEM is at 60. We talked about XLV as well. This beautiful wave count on XLV is being another great gauge of when the uh, stock market, you know, bulls can safely hold out for. So we have our wave one, an ABC correction puts in a wave too low. Wave three goes to the 161.8% extension of wave one. This is healthcare XLV. We have another ABC correction to put in a wave four low. Then we have another wave one, another wave two. XLV going to 124, right? Let's look at FSLR real quick. This is just kind of going to go back to what we've talked about on the NASDAQ. So a lot of these solar energy stocks, a lot of these clean energy stocks, one reason why I wouldn't be so quick to say that the NASDAQ is within an A, B, C is because a lot of these solar energy stocks are impulsively breaking out from this wave one low. So we have this low that's put in on uh, March 5th. The FSLR goes wave one, ABC wave two, and then it breaks above this wave one high. All of these solar energy stocks have broken above this wave one high. That means the minimum expectation is that we're going to go the length of wave one placed at the wave two low. But a lot of these solar energy stocks have already passed, you know, that relative target. So what I believe is going to happen in the solar energy sector and the clean energy sector is that FSLR is going to go to 94 for this wave three target. It's going to have a wave four correction to 87. If we take the length of wave one, place it at the wave four low, that's going to take FSLR all the way to 103. Well, what happens there? That's going to complete a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse from this March 5th low. And then a wave two correction would take FSLR back down to the low 80s. And then we would start blowing up for the summer. The whole bottom line is that a lot of these wave counts are telling us that this low that all these tech stocks formed on March 5th will not be broken. So, you know, what, what are we starting to see for quarter two? This sell off in the market uh, that we're expecting when EEM reaches 60, that we're expecting when XLV reaches 124, the sell-off in the market uh, is going to really be rotation out of oil, rotation out of banks, rotation out of airlines, rotation out of you know retail stocks, and then the NASDAQ, the clean energy stocks, the solar energy stocks, the electric vehicles, the growth stocks are going to retake the lead.